Okay, so Pi News episode 36, and I'm still really enjoying my Pi cluster case from UCtronics. A little bit more of that later in the video, but for now, let's switch over to screen capture. So first up, thanks to Football Tech for letting me know about this video. Raspberry Pi 400 mechanical keyboard upgrade, and this is KH Mail channel on YouTube. And uh, if I, I won't play the video, but you can see here, uh, keyboard is designed for people who can hit center. Uh, so in the video, they show pressing the keys off center and not getting much from it. So the upgrade is to add one of these fully mechanical keyboards and it looks really cool. It's a great video, so I won't show all of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely recommend you check it out. I do always like looking inside the Pi 400. That heatsink is a great design and works really well with overclocking. So I'll put a link in the description for the full video if you want to check that out. Next up is a Game Gear drop-in kit. Uh, so this is the Compute Module 4, which is based on the Raspberry Pi 4, so emulation will be really good on it. Uh, and you can see that it adds the various different buttons and things to a Game Gear. Now, there's loads of comments on Reddit, but also there's a link to Z Arcade on Facebook. And uh, you can see here there's some vertical boards. And uh, if we scroll down through, so this is the Game Gear one and it fits into a Game Gear case. And there is a link to a video there as well, so that's worth looking at. Next up was a story from the Raspberry Pi blog. And uh, this is about deterring package thieves from your porch. So basically it was using a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, connected up to a camera that detected motion. But also it used artificial intelligence to recognise that a package was dropped. And he even trained it with different types of packages and then would detect if a package was taken away. And it looked like it was pretty responsive. It also had face detection, so you could look at the camera to show it was you, although you could show a picture of Voldemort and that was showing that it was okay. But it's definitely worth looking at the video. It's not that long a video, considering how much detail is in it and how much work went into it. It's a very, very impressive project. Next up from the Raspberry Pi blog. Now, I did actually notice this before I'd seen this story. So... If you have a look at the documentation for the Raspberry Pi 4, it's been changed a lot and there's a lot more detail on there. And it has been out of date for a while. Uh, I often found that certain things were listed and didn't work with Pi 4 and certain things had changed. But this looks like there's a lot more detail in here. And uh, if we click on this story, until today our documentation for the big boards as opposed to Raspberry Pi Pico lived in a GitHub repository and was written in GitHub flavoured Markdown. From there, our documentation site was built from the Markdown source, which pulled periodically from the repository, run through a script written many years ago, which turned it into HTML. So this has been much improved. That's what the old site used to look like. Uh, and as I say, there, there wasn't a lot of detail there. There's definitely a lot more detail now. Next up, one of my favorite things on the Raspberry Pi 4 had definitely been Pi Amiga. Uh, so Pi Amiga was fully loaded with all games and programs and various different things for the Amiga, which I had back in the day. And uh, so Pi Amiga 2 just went into final beta. So if you're one of the testers, you'll get hold of that. Um, and it's hard to believe how they'll improve on Pi Amiga 1.5, which was amazing. I've got a separate video on that. It is really, really good. And just all the games I tried on it worked really well. I found it a very enjoyable experience to use. So it will be very interesting to see how they've improved on that. Next up, if we go to my desktop, so my Pi cluster case I mentioned earlier on, if I double click on this, uh, so I couldn't get the uh, back plate, which is just a plate to protect your fingers from the fan. I couldn't get it to go on, but you can see the fitting is slightly different. So you put these four screws in first to attach the two fans to the case, and then these four screws go top and bottom. Now, I didn't think this was going to work when I tried it because I tried to put screws all the way through, and I did find that the thread was a bit too far away, but lo and behold, I put it in, and if I spin it around, you can see that, uh, so these are for the outer casing, and these are actually underneath this, and they all went in perfectly fine. I don't know if it was because it was slightly offset, so it got a better thread, but yeah, none of this moves about. It is working perfectly well. I'm not using the fans anyway, so I don't really need that plate because I'm using the ice tower cooler, and I really like this configuration. I've actually got three SSDs in here they all fit into the ssd holder and uh, yeah it's great i had an email the other day from drew from pi mania on youtube and uh, just basically sent me a link to the video and there's a bit more information um, but if we have a look at the video 
there is an old Nest Pi 4 case and a new Nest Pi 4 case and I won't go through the details but if you're looking to buy one it's worth watching the video to see what's changed uh, and also it seems to be different in different regions so it gets even more confusing as in Spain this does come with a fan albeit a basic one but power supply is not included for all countries never was for Australia so uh, have a look at that if you're looking at buying a Nest Pi 4 case still recommend it but uh, just so you know exactly what you're getting I thought this would be an interesting one to check out in Pi News. Uh, Conkey has a config file in the hidden.config directory in your home folder named Conkey, and it's a simple text file and changing the font sizes is really straightforward. Uh, I need to change the theme for this. I don't think, can I get Conkey in this? So if I press the home button and start typing Conkey. No, it doesn't show up on that. So if I change the theme, And if we go, say we'll go for the dark theme on Twister OS. This will start Conkey up. So enter to continue. There you go. So all the details come up. I wondered if I mentioned in the video about them maybe being a bit small and I want it maybe a bit bigger on the temperature or something like that. So if we go into the home directory and uh, let's do view and show hidden files. Ah, here we go. So we're looking for Conkey. Here it is. What can I open that with? Let's try it with mouse pad and see if it works. And let's go full, well, let's not go full screen because I want to be able to see what's happening on the right hand side. Let's try that. So let's try making it twice as big or nearly twice as big. Let's go with 800 and 800. Well, let's try that with 800 as well. I'm not sure how I can stop that. Oh, if I quit out, oh, there you go. So it's definitely changed. The font still looks the same. So I've gone full screen to have a look through and uh, I just looked it up and it's the bit that says font looks like it's the ones you need to find. So let's go find font because it's all, uh, here we go. So we can change this font to something else. If we just change the size here from six and let's just double that and see what happens. So file, save, let's minimize that, it's disappeared. Is it going to come back much bigger? Yeah, it does. Obviously, the rings are in the wrong place. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a little tip if you want to get these things bigger to be able to see it. Uh, and, obviously, we can change the font with that as well. It did mention something called Samantha. So, let's try that. Yeah, here we go. I don't know if the five is important. Let's try Samantha and see if that works. And it looks like there's no space in this uh, guide that I'm using. So let's hit file and save and then skip back. And it, it's funny how it uh, updates it. Oh, there you go. So there's a really nice clear font. Obviously, this is overlapping a bit, so you'd have to play around with it. But uh, yeah, so thanks very much for that tip. And last up, a comment from Jason here uh, about improving the video performance in Firefox on Twister OS. Uh, now, I haven't tried this yet, but the video performance isn't great in Chromium. It's fine at 720, but 1080 isn't good. So I thought I'd try this tip. Uh, so we've got to install Firefox ESR, which I think, is that available in Pi Apps? Let's have a look. Oh, we had a new splash screen on Pi Apps then. So internet, so Firefox isn't there. So I've switched to the Windows 11 theme. I just prefer it. I just find it much easier to find things. Uh, so if I put in add for add remove software and click on that and type in Firefox. I do find this search not, not the most accurate of things. Uh, watch what it comes up with as the first results uh, with Firefox as the main word. Here we go, look. EduTK links handling support for known web browsers. Uh, so we want Firefox, so if I skip down, the first one we come to is there, look, but there's loads of other ones that say Firefox in it, but this looks like the one we want, Mozilla Firefox web browser extended support release. So let's click on that, hit apply, 49.1 megabytes. Yeah, I don't think that's worked. Let's try, no, it's definitely not there. Let's update and try it on terminal. And let's see if we can install it. Yeah, same size as the other one. Don't know why the add remove didn't work, um, but this would be the same in Raspberry Pi OS, same principle. So you can use it for both systems. 
So let's close that down and see if we've got Firefox in here. Yeah, we have now. So the tip was to add H264FI. So if we go one of these is extensions, add-ons, H264FI, and let's add that one on, add to Firefox. And let's try these instructions. Let's copy them exactly as they are. Let's copy that in. Okay, so that bit takes a while, but uh, it's finally finished. So let's copy the next bit in. And yes. Okay, let's close down terminal now. And as this is a different guide because it's for a different OS, I'm not sure if I need to do this next bit. So I think I'm going to skip down to the enabling hardware acceleration in Firefox and see what that does. Check the status with about and support. Let's try that. Go to graphics and check the line reads compositing. If the value is basic, you do not have hardware acceleration enabled. Yeah, compositing basic. So yeah, we definitely haven't got hardware enabled. To override, go to about config and search for the following key. Let's go for show all. Right, so the one I'm looking for is layers.acceleration.force enabled. Layers.acceleration.force enabled. So that needs to be true. And then we restart Firefox and open the About Support page. Compositing OpenGL. Okay, let's give that a try. So let's close down Chromium because we don't want that running at the same time. Uh, let's go full screen and YouTube. Interesting it's picking the uh, mobile page there. I'm just going to go back and just go straight in YouTube this way. So we're on 1080, hasn't caught up yet. Oh, it's caught up now, let. Okay, so not so smooth for me, but I'm not sure if I have to do something with H264FI, so maybe, am I blocking 60 FPS? Let's try that and uh, let's refresh that. Okay, so 1920 by 1080, zero dropped it says. So it's dropping frames at the moment, but it's only just switched into it. It's interesting, it dropped down to 1280 by 720. Okay, so I'm not. De I'm definitely not getting the results yet. Uh, let's go back into Chromium and have a look at that. So I'm gonna try adding uh, this bit into the config.txt. So sudo nano boot, because it's slightly different in Twister. So the max frame buffers is there already, look. And the DT overlay fake KMS is already in there. GPU mem is already in there and HD enabled, that's not in there I don't think. So we could try adding that one in. I'm not overclocked at the moment um, because I was messing about with my operating system so maybe I need to turn on the overclock as well. Two other drivers you can try. Yeah, so there are other drivers I can try, but let's leave it as that one. But I'm also going to switch back on my overclock because that was at stock. So let's get rid of that. And over voltage equals 8 usually works better for me with a 2147. So control X. Yes. Enter. Okay, let's reboot and give it another try. Okay, so after the reboot, I think that looks pretty good actually. Uh, and it's showing up zero frames dropped of 424. This is running at 1080 full screen. I'm getting a little bit of tearing. But uh, considering this is 1080, uh, it's the best I've seen it in Twister. It's just up two frames then of 824. But it's actually doing pretty well. Yeah, pleased with that. Thanks very much for the tip. And uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.